Hello and welcome to the channel. EDC is one of those really interesting areas where if you do a little bit of research you find there's a really enthusiastic community involved in it and it's great when you find one of these and you start going down this rabbit hole. For me though I'm much more about designing what I think is the ultimate format and then once I've got it right I see no reason to carry on obsessing about it. So it's taken me a long time to come up with what I've got in my pockets now and I think it's a really good system and I'm going to go through it in this video. So over the years I've flip-flopped between pockets and a bag for carrying your stuff around day to day and the conclusion I've come to is that actually if you can design a pocket system then you keep that stuff in your pockets every day even when you're around the house then you get that benefit of the convenience it offers while you're around the house which is a, a significant thing. So when I was kind of thinking about what I should focus on keeping in my pockets and trying to help myself figure that out I came up with two ideas for what the use of these things might be. So one of them is for unexpected events and the other is for convenience. So they're kind of two quite different use cases. So for example, you don't want to necessarily worry about carrying something in your pocket if you've got a kit nearby. So if you're in your house or in your car, you've got a little toolkit in either of those places that could take the role there. So then that means you're actually talking about convenience. So for those kinds of tools, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about is understanding why you're carrying it in your pocket. You know, is it for convenience or is it just genuinely to deal with an unexpected situation? And that will shape the things that you decide that are worthwhile carrying. So then it's important to work out what those two things actually mean. So for dealing with unexpected stuff, it's stuff like things breaking or accidents, first aid situations, or if you lose something unexpectedly, or if you have a power cut, those kinds of events, you know, that, that you're not expecting and something in your pockets will help deal with that. So from there, I started thinking about all the different kind of situations that I find myself in, you know, day to day. Um, you know, so I might, you know, I'm on the school run or am I on a family walk at the weekend or am I staying at a friend's house? So those kinds of different roles will help you figure out you know, what situations you're going to be in and what things you might encounter. So some of the kind of situations I imagined happening were, you know, if you're walking at the weekend and you get a tick and you want to take the tick off, you want to be able to deal with that. So that means carrying a tick remover and maybe an alcohol wipe. And then you've got situations like your kids falling over and getting a graze and you want to be able to deal with that. So those kind of things are unexpected and they may happen anywhere, you know, either on the school run or if you're out and about at the weekend. So this is the Boulder Wallet by Arc Company. Unbelievably light, very compact doesn't add to any bulk but the fact that it keeps everything together so nicely in such a nice little bundle makes it much more comfortable and easy to carry in your pocket and inside here I carry the first aid stuff so I've got the alcohol wipes the plasters and then on the front here is the tick remover which is this little thing here so those don't take up any space at all in this kit um, and you know solve quite a lot of the first aid issues that you might come across day to day. And then you've got kind of weird everyday things like clothes breaking, you know, your shoelaces snapping or uh, your threads hanging out of your clothes and you need to be able to deal with them kind of conveniently when you're out and about. Also in here, I've got the zip ties. They've got these little pouches on the front. So the zip ties and tick remover, just stuff in there. Obviously you're not getting these things out that frequently. So the speed of access for this kind of thing, remember this is the uh, unexpected events rather than the convenience. Um, the zip ties are in there. So very handy to, to have those on me. And at some point I'd like to get some duct tape, just a little piece or two, you know, somewhere stashed in here as well. So the next thing that I've found is quite handy is a Zippo, uh, but it's not a normal Zippo, which are pretty rubbish and they run out even if you don't use them. This is the Turbo. <laughs> Uh, this is amazing. I don't know how I didn't know these existed. Um, you, they're really cheap on Amazon. A genuine Zippo uh, insert using the, the butane, uh, which is fantastic. And it just clips into your old Zippo that you've probably got lying around. Actually, a really nice format to keep in your pocket because they're so flat and so small. It's a really nice shape. So that's fantastic. Uh, quite often I find something's fraying, you know, my uh, kids' shoes the other day were all fraying and they're just, you know, it's nylon or whatever. So quick blast of that and it just singed it off and stopped it fraying. Very handy. Same with paracord ends um, and lighting candles and fireworks, you know, that sort of thing where people were running around trying to find a lighter. If you've got one in your pocket, it's, it's job done. Another thing that I kind of figured might often come up is wanting to leave a message for someone. Uh, so, you know, if you're, you're, someone's crashed into your car or something and you need to leave a message somewhere on a windscreen, and that's quite a handy thing to be able to do. So one of the other things that I find myself doing quite often is needing to write a label on something like a kid's water bottle if their name's rubbed off or something and you need to you know, send them into school with a, a labeled item. So we've got the space pen here. 
These are great. I mean, they're so small and yet they turn into a full size pen when you flip the lid around, they're right upside down, they're right underwater, all that stuff. I mean, if you're gonna carry a pen, it's, it's <laughs> I can't think of a better one than this really. Uh, so that's great. And then the other thing is the Sharpie. So obviously the space pen is not gonna be very good for doing labels on water bottles, big plastic hard surfaces. It would probably do it, but you know, you want something a bit more visible. So the Sharpie is great for that. And they do these small format ones, so that's perfect. Just sits in there. So those two can go in that front pouch. And the other thing when I was designing this pocket system is making sure you're not carrying anything you don't need. So for example, my garage key, I decided not to carry that because the garage is near the house and I have to go through the house to get to the garage. So I might as well just take the garage key on the way out of the back door to get to the garage. There's no need for me to keep that in my pocket. That's a workflow that I can use to save having to carry that all the time. So obviously when you're out and about, you definitely don't need a garage key in your pocket. So you only need it for a tiny amount of time. It's not worth keeping in there the whole time. So you can save a bit of space and weight if you think about those kinds of things. So if you're enjoying this video, please like, share, subscribe, click the bell button because YouTube is pretty ruthless when it, it uh, tries to suggest videos. Uh, if you click the bell button, it will always try and remind you that I've got a new video out. So then I started thinking about the convenience side of things. So what should I carry in my pockets to make things more convenient, even though I probably would be able to go and find a tool not too far away, but the convenience element would make it worthwhile keeping something in my pocket to deal with that. So for example, a tiny torch in your pocket is worthwhile for that convenience. Obviously you've got plenty of torches in your house, but if you find yourself in the attic, for example, and you've forgotten to grab one of those torches, it's actually a real hassle to go back down the ladder, find the torch in your house and, and light it up. Whereas if you've got one in your pocket, you can just whip it out and you've got your light there. So the Perrin Mini by Olight is the torch I keep in my pocket. So I've done a bit more detail on this in my Olight torch roundup video. Uh, amazing format for pocket carry. You know, it's got the strong clip. So I actually just keep this in the corner of my pocket um, and I can just, you know, pull it out in one go. It stays there. No, nothing comes out with it. It's just very easy to get out of my pocket and I've got instant access to it. And of course, it's the Periscope style um, format. So you can clip it straight on the top of your shirt and you've got forward facing hands-free light. And that for a convenience tool at this size, fantastic. I mean, the times I've used this, and found that forward facing hands-free light without having to find a head torch or anything like that, just something in your pocket all the time. It's, it's been so useful to have. So really super pleased with the choice on that one. So changing batteries in toys is another thing I always find myself needing to do. The kids come to me with a flat battery toy and I've got to change the batteries. I don't want to go around the house finding a right screwdriver. I just want to be able to do it quickly for them there and then. Um, so screwdrivers for that kind of thing, really important. So the multi-tool I chose is a Leatherman rebar. Um, because in the UK, we can't carry any locking blades uh, in public at all. So that rules out most of the Leatherman multi-tools um, and in fact, most multi-tools in general, which is a real shame because uh, obviously a locking blade is much safer. Uh, so, but there we go. So this one is actually the bladeless Leatherman rebar. So there's no blade on this at all. And that works really nicely with my other idea, which is to carry a proper knife. So it's nice to have a proper knife and um, much better than the ones you get on multi-tools, but I don't like the idea of redundancy either. So it's actually quite nice not having um, another blade, which is unnecessary on this. So yeah, this is a bladeless rebar, great little tool. Uh, there are some big issues with it, uh, which I'll go over when I review this in another video, uh, but I think it's the best kind of compact, well, on the smaller side of the Leatherman big multi-tools, but it still has all the interesting things like the replaceable cutting blades and really chunky big pliers as well. Along with that comes the bit kit, which is super useful. So you've got your different bits in here and the bit adapter so that you can use a hex bit in there as well. So that just clicks on. So that was another reason I selected this one because it's got the shaft that works with the Leatherman bit kit. And this uh, little pouch that the whole lot fits in by Arc Company, a little Etsy store, these are great. A um, little bit expensive getting them shipped to the UK with the import duty and all the rest of it, but they're, they're perfect. They, they really slim down the whole thing. They're so slim and so light and you can just keep all this in here. And the fact that you put, this is, you know, this is heavy, this is the heaviest thing in my pockets here by far. And I was pretty worried about carrying that much weight. But what's really interesting when you, when you create a little sort of soft shape thing like this and it sits in your pocket, it can't flap about, it doesn't float about. Normally if you just chuck a multi-tool in your pocket, it kind of bangs about and that's when you're aware of that weight. So stopping that momentum, that movement of the item in your pocket goes a long way to making you not really aware of the weight of it. So that works very well. It's a really nice way of carrying one of these.
So the Leatherman rebar has got all the kind of stuff that is useful in these situations. So your scissors um, are the main one, the big pliers, it's big enough to be useful. So I was looking at the Leatherman PS4, which is a really tiny little multi-tool. And then they're great, they're so small and light, they're, they're kind of cute. But if you wanted to do something useful, like really you know, try and undo a nut with the pliers, you need a big chunky pliers, you need the biggest you can get away with carrying. And I think the rebar is about that kind of format. The other thing that's nice about the rebar is the screwdriver's got a really long shaft. You know, it's quite often when you're using a screwdriver, the depth and the, the availability to the screw isn't very good, and these little short multi-tool type screwdrivers can't really get in and, and use them functionally, but the rebar's got good long shafts on all the screwdrivers, especially when you then use the bit kit as well, so it sort of acts like an extender. Um, so that's that's super handy. Uh, things like opening packets and boxes, obviously when you get a parcel, you know, you don't want to have to go around the house looking for something to open the box. It's much easier just to have something at hand to get into the box. So complementing the rebar is the knife. So this is a UK legal, there's no lock on it. I've added the little thumb stud there and that means I can actually take it out of my pocket. So again, this is like the torch on the left pocket. This sits on my right pocket in the corner with the clip and I can just pull it out with one hand and open it with one hand. So if you're holding something and you need to cut it, you know, without putting it down, I can do that. It's just brilliant, really, really handy. Um, there's a nice little bit of uh, sort of knurling on there. So if you click it forward, it's got one stop there, but if you went a bit further, it's not pushing the blade into your finger, it's pushing the little bit of metal that's sort of protecting your finger there. So given that we've got to have non-locking blades, that kind of feature is important. This one is has got the black blade and the black clip, so it's a little bit more discreet when you see the clip on the outside of my pocket there as well. Very light, really lightweight this as well, and not expensive. So that's the Luna, um, lovely little pen knife to keep on you. So your keys, your house and your car keys fall into this category. Obviously you could take them off a peg and use them every time you need them, but it's much more convenient to have them in your pocket all the time. You know, the times I've walked out to the car and not have my car keys in the pocket, I want to avoid that situation. So they just stay in my pockets all the time now. It's much easier that way, you know where they are. But there are certain things you want to get right in that situation. You don't necessarily want to be taking a whole bundle of keys in and out of your pocket all the time. So you, there's some efficiency design systems that I've put in place to make it okay to keep stuff in your pocket. The car key in particular doesn't ever need to leave my pocket because it's a keyless one. So the car key is not actually attached to my house keys. And there's uh, another thing that I do with my house keys, um, which makes this whole thing work really, really well. You know, the amount of time I see other people sort of running around the house trying to find the car keys because you never put them down in the same place. And then you might one day think, okay, we'll have a peg and there's always going to be the car keys there. And then, except when they're not and you can't find them. So if they're in your pocket, they don't come out of your pocket or they're attached to your trousers, in my case with the house key, there's no issue. It's the most reliable way of knowing where your keys are. So this is the Bellroy key cover. Uh, amazingly simple, amazingly effective design. So you've got your keys in there. Um, a little elastic thing just goes through, so it's very easy and flexible to get them out, and a magnet to keep it closed. Again, you can do this with one hand, and what I do is keep this clipped onto my belt loop, and that distance is enough to keep this clipped onto my belt loop and do the keyholes, which are hip height. So, you know, I just grab this, and this comes out of my pocket. I can get the key. Because the keys are obviously in a certain order, I know which one is which immediately, and I can just do that with one hand um, and open the door. So. A very annoying day-to-day -day workflow actually made into something really quite effortless where with this little setup and um, these you can just make easily yourself out of paracord i'll probably do that in another video but you can certainly there are videos out there that show how to do this i made one mistake i missed a loop there so it's twisting at that point now it shouldn't twist if you get the the knot right all the way down and that's a nice little thing you know you can make these they're fun um, i probably would downsize the carabiner a little bit but that was just one i had hanging around so there's no space for a phone in the front pocket. So my back pocket is used for the phone and the other back pocket is where I keep my face mask. And also I chuck my AirPods in this pocket alongside the rebar as well. And that's where my car key goes, which is just uh, by itself. So that stays in that pocket all the time. And the nice thing about all these things is you can kind of, they, they sit flat in your pocket. They don't tend to double up. So because of the pouch and the space is sort of left, everything kind of sits quite flush and it's actually quite comfortable. Um, the weight isn't an issue because there's no flapping about and it works really well. And to have all of this stuff at hand is brilliant. So the key I've found to making this work all the time is to make sure all this stuff is in your pockets all the time. It's then a reliable system that you can use and you know where everything is. And my friends think this is crazy. They think it's really funny that I keep this stuff in my pockets in, in the house. 
But once you do it and you realize actually you're saving so many trips and running around to drawers trying to find stuff just because you've got this stuff in your pockets, it's really cool. Obviously when you change your trousers, it's a little bit of a rigmarole. You've got to move everything out in from one set of pockets to the other. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's worth it. You know, it's, it's great. You just keep that kit. You become f super familiar with it. You get good at getting the knife out and opening it with one hand, that sort of thing. The same with the torch. You know where everything is. It sort of becomes an extension of your sort of uh, reflexes and you're you know you're you can deal with those situations almost subconsciously so I'm sure everyone's got their own slightly different take on this and this is obviously just definitely a, um, a starting point or a place to grab some ideas for, for sorting something out but I think one of the main things I want to sort of get across is it's worth spending time to get a pocket carry idea sorted don't just sort of float through life grabbing things here and there spend a bit of time think about what you want to keep in your pockets and make it happen get everything set up get it done and and stick with it the reward is there if you put the effort in kind of thing so I'll be covering these products in more detail in other videos as well so um, if you have any questions on any of them do let me know in the comments for this one and I'll include that in the in the next videos um, so if you've enjoyed this video please do like and subscribe and share the video don't forget the bell notification button in YouTube and they quite often get lost if you don't hit that bell icon so if you've got any questions at all I'm very happy to talk through anything here so let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video